Hello everyone. Welcome to Snippet Bullet. I am Prakash and I am going to explain you in this video what is amortized time analysis. We all know what is time complexity analysis. What is it? Time complexity analysis is basically the time taken by your algorithm in worst case. Okay. So what do you mean by worst case? Worst case considers that your size of the input or the, your input is very, very large. It is tending to infinity. Also in the worst case, we consider that the resources consumed by your algorithm is maximum or it is touching the maximum limit possible. Okay. So Based on these two conditions, we consider the worst case analysis or worst case time analysis. That is what we call it as time complexity analysis of an algorithm. Because n is very large, we often tend to ignore any constant term which is coming into picture. That is how we reach the time complexity of any of the algorithm. But we need to consider few things that in the real world situation are we going to face a case where n is really very 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 large or tending to infinity in the same situation are we really going to face a situation where our resources are going to be consumed to the maximum limit no right in normal situation we are not going to face also, don't you think that worst case time analysis is the very pessimistic approach where we are considering that everything bad will happen with our algorithm and we are going to touch all the maximum limit of our resources. So, what is the answer to it? Do we have any approach in which we are going to calculate the time taken by our algorithm in more practical way. What do you mean by practical way? Practical way means, let us say if the whole um, operations in my algorithm is taking some amount of time and if I divide it by the quantity of the input or the input, whatever amount I get, that is the average case time complexity okay that is what in a rough way we can say it is amortized time complexity so if i'll explain you in a simple language what is amortized time complexity it means that instead of analyzing the worst case time complexity i am going to consider a more practical approach where i am going to calculate the time taken in each of the operation and then I will divide it by the the whole amount of the input. So I will get the average case time complexity in a mathematical way. Okay, so that is the amortized time complexity. Let us go into further little detail. Okay, let us see the two situations. This is our worst case. In the worst case, we only consider, for example, this is infinity and is very, very large here. So in worst case, I consider time complexity analyzing only this situation where n is very large. But in the amortized time complexity analysis, what is done is we calculate the time taken in all these steps. Basically, we calculate the area of all this curve which is taking with the x-axis or the size of the input okay and then we divide it by n or the size of the input so in this way we are going to get our amortized time complexity so let us go into little more detail we will understand it now with an example stack popping consider a stack data structure in which there are several elements okay you have to pop one by one each of the element 
so how it is done do we really empty our array like you know the stack is implemented either using the array or the linked list okay so consider that we are using an array for implementing our stack so first we let us say push one then we push two then we push three okay and then somebody says that okay pop so we basically conceptually we remove this last element but in the actual we don't remove it we maintain our one index called top what is the index for the top element in this stack and when it is asked to pop we just decrement it by one so in that way next time when it is asked to push we basically push at the top okay so this is how stack is implemented but let us say if somebody asks you pop n number of times what would be the time complexity of it so in the worst case you will say that it would be big o of n why because if you are doing big o of one operation n times popping one element is going to take o of one time why because it is just top minus minus operation decrementing the top index so doing this n times will take big o of n but this is worst case time complexity analysis where we are consider that considering that we are going to take an approach which is worst in time okay what is amortized time complexity analysis so instead of taking sorry popping n times what we will do is we will decrement the top index by n at once so our top will become simply top is equal to top minus n this will basically empty our or pop n element from our stack so if our top was this one earlier so we will simply decrement n and our top will become this one now so you see simply decrementing top by n it will take big o of 1 so in this way we can understand that the operation is same okay popping n time but the time analysis now has become differently how because we are kind of optimizing our operation we are taking a practical approach instead of considering a, a worst case analysis or a very pessimistic operation in this case let us take another very interesting example of dynamic array what is dynamic array in the dynamic array we initially take the size of the array as 1 once it is filled we increment the size of the array by 2 we basically okay let us understand this way initially our size is 1 now when the request for pushing another element comes we take another array of size 2 and we copy this array okay and then we push the new element so we copy one here and two is pushed here okay now when the pushing of three is going to happen there is no sufficient space available so what we'll do we will allocate the four size array basically we will double the size of the array we will create a new array and we will copy the existing array here and push the new element new push request then again we will push let us say four to here now again our array is full so if the request for pushing five is going to come we will allocate new array of size eight and we are going to again copy this array 1 2 3 4 and then we will push five so in this way we are basically when our array is going to be filled we double its size and copy our old array here and then we will continue pushing the element till this array is again filled so this is called dynamic array where we double the size of the array every time it is going to be filled now if somebody asks me that in this dynamic array what is the time complexity for inputting or pushing n elements so let me make little space up here okay 
okay uh, yeah so let us say if we have to push number from 1 to n in uh, in an in a uh, dynamic array okay so how it is going to happen in worst case we consider that okay at the step of n it is going to be doubled in worst case so we are basically copying the whole array again and we are copying this whole array lots of time so in worst case let us consider that we are going to copy it n times so that worst case time complexity is n into n basically we go of n square this is the worst case time complexity but if we will observe it in a practical way that okay let us start calculating how much operations are being done at each step and then we will divide it by the number of input so that we will get the average number of operation done for pushing n elements so in that way we will get amortized time complexity so in the worst case this was a time complexity o of n square let us calculate amortized time complexity we will consider by pushing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 10 10 10 okay we are going to push all these elements these are basically my items and when i when i am going to push what will be my array size okay so in this case when the element is 1 my array size will be 1 obviously when it is going to be 2 i will double the size it will become 2 when it is going to be 3 i will again double the size 4 when the 4 is to be pushed it is fine because we have space available but when 5 is going to be pushed i am again going to double it now i have sufficient space when i am pushing 6 again i am i have su sufficient space again i have sufficient space when the request for pushing 9 will come the array is full i will double it like this okay now how many numbers of operations are being done in this case pushing one it is just one operation in inserting the element into that memory space that's it right but in this case for pushing two i have to double the i have to double the size of the array first then i have to copy this one into that two sized array okay so doubling the size of the array and copying okay so how much time it will take first creating the double sized array will take one operation and copying this older array because it has one element so it is 2 1 plus 1 is 2 okay similarly when the request for pushing 3 is coming again i am doubling the size of the array so it is one operation and i am copying two sized array so two operation so it is three right again we have one empty space in the four sized array and the request for pushing four is coming so it is just one again the our array is full so the request for pushing five is going to come doubling will be happening and once it is doubled we will copy the four sized array okay again in the same way there is sufficient space again there is sufficient space so just one operation again there is sufficient space so one operation here doubling and then copying it the whole eight size array similarly again it is one so if you'll observe this is 9 1 4 5 we are basically summing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 Plus one plus one plus one plus nine plus one like this. If you'll observe it little bit, what is happening here? We are basically, if let us say it is going till n, we have this one plus one plus one. Okay, for this, this is one plus two. This is one. This is one plus four. This is one. This is one. This is one. this is 1 plus 8 this is 1 and so on so we are basically having n times 1 and 
this one, two, four, eight, a geometric progression. One plus two plus four plus eight plus, you know, it will go on till this geometric progression sequence number will not reach n. So it will be two to the power log of two n. Okay, something like that. If we will, this is n, n plus. So what is the geometric progression sum formula? The first element is a multiplied by, because here the, the, the ratio is Okay, just give me a second. Okay, so this is the first element. So common ratio is R, R is basically two here. So R to the power N, this is my geometric progression. Okay, this is the geometric progression sum formula. So what I'll get my A, the first element is one, R is two, it is going till the nth element, which is log of two, sorry, log of N to the base two minus one and two minus one. It will give me basically n. Why? Because this is one, this n minus one divided by one. So it will give me n minus one. Okay. So it is like n minus one. This is the number of operations done when pushing n elements one by one okay so what will be the average number of operation so average number of operation will be 2n minus 1 divided by sorry n it will be approximately 2 constant term. okay n is very large so it is approximately big o of 1 which is constant so see Using the worst case time complexity, we got the answer as n square. Okay. But in case of, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We are taking the time case, time taken for inserting n elements. So we will not divide it by n. It will be big O of n. If you will be taking the time taken by, for inserting or pushing just one element, then we will be dividing it by n and it will be big of 1. But in this case, it will be n. So this is like time taken for inserting n elements. Okay. So worst case time complexity will be big O of n square. Amortized time complexity is big O of n. In the same way for inserting just one element, in the worst case, what we'll be doing is we will be copying the whole array and then inserting one array. So copying will take too often. But in this amortized time complexity, we will consider that, okay, on an average, how much time it will take to insert the nth element or the one element. So it will come O of n as we have calculated here. Okay. So this is all I have for this video. And I have explained what exactly is amortized time complexity with two of the examples. Hope you like this video and uh, you have learned something new. So please subscribe to this channel. I keep coming with uh, some new videos, mostly uh, which is like basic doubts among the students. So thank you once again for watching this video.